Hi, everyone. Um, hey, let me introduce you. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> yeah, our next talk is going to be about thymus. So, um, or you can tell me how to pronounce it later on. Um, so let's welcome Eli and Adrian. <laughs> Let's see when yep. the slides uh, show up. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to our presentation. Um, we are excited to introduce you to Thymus, or Thymus, as we say in German, um, a web front end for managing multiple Nexus devices. Uh, my name is Eli Kogan Wang, and I'm here with Adrian Block. So we'll go over who we are, uh, why we are building Thymus, uh, what Thymus actually is, and how it works. And we'll go, be going a bit into what will come in the new future and a little demo you can already see on the stage. <laughs> so uh, who are we? I'm Eli. I've been using Nix for about five years. Uh, right now, I'm still employed at the Flying Circus, and I'm studying computer science. And I'm Adrian. I'm also studying computer science, uh, and I'm currently focusing on DevOps and security topics, mainly uh, at my employer, Phoenix Contact Electronics, uh, an electronic uh, manufacturing company. Yeah. Um, we are here as a five-person team behind uh, Thymus. Uh, we've already incorporated as the Odysseus GmbH uh, to make the development of Thymus sustainable over the long term. Uh, in the picture, you can see us at the Embedded World exhibition, um, which we visited uh, a bit ago. And uh, why are we building Thymus? From the perspective of the Nixos community, everyone here, I would guess, likes using Nixos a lot. Um, but let's face it, non-Nixos users are often very intimidated by Nixos. And we believe that many users like to click on colorful buttons and icons. So uh, they prefer a visual or user-friendly interface, uh, as I wrote in the presentation. Um, there are other projects that try to provide some kind of graphical user interface for Nixos, but they don't uh, fulfill all the requirements that we have for a GUI. So there are existing projects like, for example, Snowflake OS and NixGUI, and they provide a GTK application to manage your configuration and manage your packages. So they aren't web-based, and uh, you can't uh, control the systems from the browser. Also, they are single system only configurers. There are also projects like uh, mynixos.com, uh, which provides a web interface for managing your Nixos configurations, as well as providing some build capabilities. But there is no part of it that does device deployment and or management. And it's also not open source, so we can't use that. So there's also a little bit of the community discussion sometimes about some kind of GUI tool to manage Nixos, to manage packages and configurations uh, with a bit of buzz that uh, we feel is indicative that uh, we should develop some kind of GUI. Of course, there are also many reasons to build Thymus outside of the Nix community. Let's have a look in the wild. There are many Linux devices with an ad hoc or questionable deployment in the wild right now, thinking about embedded devices, like interactive kiosks at your favorite uh, fast food restaurant, um, digital signage in buses or, for example, airports, um, smart home at your home, and uh, retail systems like uh, point of sales machines. Tumis should and can, can structure deployment like these. Um, we are currently doing uh, or preparing pilot projects with local partners. Uh, at first, with a local airport, we are using Thymus to run their flight information display system. Um, so you can see where and when your departures and arrivals come. And we are also doing manufacturing use cases. You can see me there at a manufacturing demo space um, where I touch a, a, yeah, a screen uh, which runs uh, Thymus. So let's get into what Thymus actually is. Is it yet another Nixos wrapper? Mm, yes and no. Uh, it definitely is a web front end for managing multiple devices with Nixos. And it's a v 3 license available at GitHub at this link. And it does a few things. First of all, it generates images for initial deployment of devices. 
It deploys new configurations to already running systems. It generates this NixOS configuration from graphical user configuration using Python and a thing we call Thymus modules and manages the generated configurations in the Git repository. The deployment mode is push mode. This means that we build the system image on the controller, nix copy closure it to the target and activate it on the target device. So let's get into these Thymus modules. They are just Python subclasses of a module class. And uh, while the interface is not quite stabilized yet, these Thymus modules allow you to generate Nixos configuration from user configuration. And uh, these Thymus modules can be associated with either a device or a tag. So we have a tagging mechanism with which you can share configuration with different devices. The Thymus modules can be provided by the user. So there's an extension mechanism by which you can extend Thymus with your own custom modules. So the tags concept, um, I'm sure many of you have interacted with something very similar. Uh, you can tag devices and attach configuration to the devices. We also have the concept of tasks, where every action like a build, update, or deploy triggers tasks managed by Thymus. Uh, we give you a progress bar that passes uh, Nix internal JSON logs uh, to allow you real-time insight into how the Nix build process is going. Let's get into how Thymus works. At the heart of Thymus is the Thymus controller. A user connects to the Thymus controller and gets served a web-based GUI, the Thymus dashboard. On there, the user can modify the state JSON stored in the controller, and the controller generates Nixos configuration from this state. Once the user triggers a deploy, the Thymus controller builds the generated Nixos configuration to Nixos systems and copies and deploys them to the devices. The repository where the Nexos configuration is written to uh, consists of a few different parts. Uh, the state JSON is user controlled, as you just saw. We generate the host and tag modules uh, from the state JSON and store them in this repository. And uh, we use the flake locking mechanisms to manage dependencies uh, in a reproducible way. Uh, the goal of the repository is that the structure at the end of the day is understandable and still accessible to uh, experienced users who may want to fall back from a GUI to use the plain uh, Nixos commands and tools. We have quite a few things on the roadmap for the near and far future. Um, we want to integrate with more Nixos projects to achieve some more capabilities in the software, like uh, Nixos Anywhere or HNix for sequence management. Um, we also want to package Thymus better for non-Nixos users. So we want to provide for the public a controller VM image or perhaps a container. Um, we want to develop more Thymus modules for different applications and integrate monitoring into uh, the controller and I forgot to mention an agent, so sorry. We'll go back a few slides. Um, you can see in the devices, um, we have an optional component of Thymus, uh, the Thymus agent, uh, which you can deploy to the devices to uh, manage things like uh, host keys, public host keys, which you can share with the Thymus controller. Um, it's an optional component, and the system works without deploying the agent. But we want to integrate monitoring uh, into the controller and agent pair so that uh, users can have uh, useful data in the controller. We want to integrate external builders for different uh, processor architectures uh, into Thymus. Um, this is because right now, since we are building ARM images, we have to, uh, on x86 systems, fall back to some kind of uh, cross-architecture building solution. And uh, because the cross-building stuff in Nix packages isn't cached, uh, builds like these would take a long time. And I think the infrastructure 
uh, is just not that maintained. So right now we are falling back to BinFMT emulation uh, so that users can also build ARM images and derivations. But of course that has a performance penalty that in the future we want to avoid. We also want to implement magic rollbacks. Um, since we have an agent on the remote system, we are able to detect when a device loses connection with the controller and then uh, trigger a rollback to the previous Nexus generation. We still need to do proper device identity management uh, with cryptographically secure primitives like uh, TPM. Uh, maybe we want to integrate secure boot. And also we want to integrate a CLI to interact with the generated repository um, and the state JSON file. And there's also a lot of other topics that we want to address in the future. Um, that was it with the main topics. We'll go into a demo. Um, we've prepared a suitcase with four displays and four Raspberry Pis inside. And here you can see an example of the Thymus dashboard. Let's get, oh, I'm in the wrong Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a battery in it, so we can power the devices without any uh, external uh, power. And exactly, and it has its own Wi-Fi network. Yeah, currently. In the front end, you can see quite a few tabs in the sidebar. You can see the tasks, as I mentioned, in the bottom. Uh, you can see the the devices right here. Um, if I go into the details of, for example, device zero one, I get a few things. The host key management, uh, as I mentioned, is in here. Um, you can, from here, access the configuration of modules associated with the device, uh, and you can also edit the configuration of a tag. Um, two features that um, are also available here are uh, terminal access to the device and also um, uh, VNC remote access to the device. So you can see I can navigate and click around and scroll on this display so that, for example, if you have a cookie banner or something, you can click it away. Let's deploy a different um, configuration for this device. Um, I just immediately navigated into the configuration for the display tag, uh, which all four devices are tagged with. So if we change the URL right here, let's say nixcon.org, and uh, deploy this right now. Um, you will see we have a task for deploying to each of the devices. We have a progress bar showing the current progress of the Nix build task, although uh, with Nixos rebuild, uh, currently we don't show the progress of Nix copy closure because the flag is uh, for uh, uh, proper internal JSON logs is not passed properly to the uh, Nexus rebuild command. We can also go into the details of one of the deployment tasks and uh, see the standard out, standard error, uh, error and also uh, because we are parsing the internal JSON output of Nix, uh, we can see with build tasks separated warning, notice, info and error logs, which is sometimes very useful. Um, I'd expect yeah. in a few seconds to see the it's deployment already. of the mm -hmm. Yeah, of the deployment to uh, the new configuration. I could also, yeah, I can also look at the devices right here. We have an overview over all of them. Hmm. If it'll load. Yeah, we have access to this. Um, did I miss anything? History. You can talk uh, about the imaging also. Yeah, I can tell you about imaging. Um, we, of course, implemented Im uh, generating a initial uh, device image. Um, but uh, since we are emulating ARM building using BinFMT, there's a big performance hit. So building an image might take more than two minutes. Um, now, what I wanted to show is we have uh, a history right here um, where you can see the different commits that are already applied to the repository. You can see small diffs. So uh, we have a few comfort features. Um, did I miss anything? That's, that's I think we can uh, okay, yeah. go into the questions, maybe some suggestions of what we mm -hmm. want to, what you want to try and see in the. Uh, in the dashboard, we can try some things out. 
mm -hmm. if you're so inclined. Do we have questions? For configuring your modules, you have a way of introspecting NixOS modules so you can provide a UI for arbitrary <laughs> NixOS modules that already exist? Or do you have to write custom Thymus modules for every? Does so, that make sense? yeah. So, you asked whether uh, the Thymus modules can directly interface with existing Nix uh, modules. Uh, no, we are a completely separate uh, abstraction layer on top of that. We generate Nix files using uh, custom Python code that the user can specify. Um, however, I believe the design is flexible enough so that you can uh, eat Nixos module settings and uh, uh, generate a, a Python module from that. However, that is uh, explicitly not what we are going for because uh, you can see that sort of uh, um, ansatz, uh, this kind of uh, uh, in the Nix GUI project, in the uh, Snowflake OS projects, where they directly provide access to the Nix OS settings to the user. And uh, we believe that an abstraction layer is probably necessary for many tasks because you want to do different operations on the repository depending on what kind of settings you provide. Maybe you want to upload a file and store it somewhere in the repository. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, since this generate Nix configuration, is the stored in some sort of uh, version histories, uh, version system like Git or what? Yeah, yeah um, we saw this already. Um, we saved the generated configuration in a repository that uh, actually is a Nix flake. Um, so you can use the repository using the normal commands as a fallback and still deploy to systems. And this gives us the advantage that, of course, we can take diffs of configuration. Right now, we only show the diff of the state JSON, but uh, that is enough since it generates all the other config. And we can see in this change, we changed from Thymus.io to Nexus.org. Is this only kept internally, or can this be pushed to uh, some sort of forge? There's uh, an open draft PR with remote Git integration right now. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, another uh, question would be, you call agent uh, for a web UI and you call agent for an agent on the host. Isn't that some sort of name conflict that can confuse users? Um, what did you say about agent in the web UI? Uh, you have a slide of the, the components. The user agent and the agent. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I would say that uh, can, can create confusion. There should be some other yeah, naming no, this scheme, is, I guess. Um, or I think this is computer science that you call a browser a user agent. I, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we call it. It's a very fancy name for browser. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, maybe we can we can think about the naming of the agent on the device. Uh, our first term was parasite, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we we aren't uh, t talking about that now. But uh, it's only r really uh, as uh, low features. Only to uh, to introduce things, maybe get monitoring or something like that, and uh, yeah, it's and it's optional. It seems that Nix has enabled uh, this app or the product. I'm curious: uh, Are you using features of Nix that aren't quite stable? Uh, does that the internal JSON output is completely experimental and unstable. I expect yeah. this to break in the next few versions. <laughs> um, and uh, for example, uh, because we are using flakes, um, I, I think this is an important part because of the locking mechanism mm -hmm. of uh, floating dependencies. Um, technically, the, this is still experimental. Uh, to clarify, does the experimental nature of Nix hamper uh, your development? At all? I, uh, in, in my experience, it's stable. Swell. OK, thanks. Thanks for your talk. I have a question about um, your partitioning layout on the devices. Are you uh, using a read-only store? Um, or do you do some AB partitioning, something like that? Or if not, how you plan to do that maybe in the future if you care about device integrity? I'm thinking about uh, DM Verity and stuff like that. Do you already have some ideas about that? Um, 
yeah, we already have some ideas in uh, that very direction, but right now it's a simple deployment of a mutable Nixos system that you can deploy to with the normal Nixos tools. Um, in the future, depending on what customer needs are and what, uh, what interests we see and have and what problems we want to solve, we could implement alternative device integrity uh, things like AV partitioning, a backup partition. Uh, yeah, there are definitely thoughts on that in our notes. Thank you. If not, we um, thank you. And we got some uh, merch, uh, actually. So if some people like to have some Nix uh, beer coasters with our logo and, uh, in the back, uh, you can just come afterwards to the front and take one, some of them. That <laughs> deserves a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>